Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 64 of Tales of Tamriel, a Dungeon Crawler Network production. I am your host, Agelos. Uh, forgive me for not having an episode last week. Uh, some of you may have known I had a terrible allergy attack where I was... Bedridden. Bedridden, yes. Uh, it was really rough on me. Couldn't speak, couldn't breathe at all. Uh, Thais and I had our first, um, natural childbirth class and I went while sick. Lamaze class. Lamaze class, yes. I went while sick and it was funny because while everyone else are like, do your breathing, I'm like, I literally cannot breathe out of my nose, so. He was still the best husband there though. Because he was asking questions and whenever, whenever the teacher told us to do something, he like jumped right in and he was doing it. There were other wives going, look, they're doing it. <laughs> and that uh, voice you heard. Swap. What did you say? Something about a wife swap, I think. Uh, <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're a uh, class swap. The goody two shoes. I was, I <laughs> was. Everyone always hates them in class. Everyone else was quiet. Every time she has something, we were like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll tell you. Yep. All right, well, the other voices that you just heard, first one, Thais. Thais, how are you? Uh, I'm good, you know, being kicked to death uh, into my bladder, but, you know, I'm good. Ooh, yeah. That's a shame. Yeah, it kind of sucks. It's all right. <laughs> and also joining us, man running the stream and uh, calling me a goody two shoes and stuck up kid in <laughs> class, Stoldian. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, thanks. Excellent, excellent. Uh, before we get going, I do got to say this episode is brought to you in part by awesome fans just like you guys and our newest Patreon supporter, Matt. Matt, thank you so much for supporting us, and uh, we really appreciate it. Um, if you're currently not supporting the Dungeon Crawler Network and wish to help us out, you could consider donating or becoming a patron of ours on our Patreon page. You can find the links to both of these on the bottom of our website, DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. If you're unable to support us financially but still wish to support us, be, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels, leave us a review on iTunes, or consider telling a friend about us. All of that helps us out so much, and we appreciate everything you guys do. You're the best. Um, a little bit of follow-up for our Patreon supporters. I posted this on Twitter earlier, but I'm not sure if you know a lot of people heard it or whatnot. So I'll say it again here. For anyone who is currently supporting us via Patreon, um, at least one person has, I have a little giveaway to do for you guys. It's not really ESO related, uh, but if anyone's interested in trying out Landmark, I still have two beta keys for the closed beta giveaway. So it's first come, first served. Anyone who's one of our Patreon supporters, uh, just send me a message either on patreon.com or, uh, or send me a tweet, anything like Just get a hold of me some way and I will get it to you guys. So give it a shot. It's a lot of fun, fun little game. Uh, felt like just giving that out. All right, it's uh, time to roll into game news, guys. We were in here last week, so we got a little bit to talk about. First up in game news, Elder Scrolls patch 2.0.7 came out, which was an int incremental patch that addresses a number of issues with dismounting, fear effects dropping you through the world, uh, it boosted several Dwemer area lootable containers, and more. Also note that the... Mahoris campaign that was open for the Welcome Back weekend will be closed this patch. The size of the patch is approximately 1.4 gigs uh, if you have a French client because that's some French voiceover stuff in there and 240 megs for English and German. So uh, that was last week and of course we didn't get a chance to really talk about it. There wasn't a whole lot with the patch other than what I was very kind of happy with was Zoss I guess, listening and upping some of the Dwemer areas. Like, they went through all the different areas and upped the lootable containers, and they gave percentages for how much they upped it. Uh, they did five or six. It was I was kind of impressed that they only waited a week. Uh, Thais, what are your thoughts? I am so sorry. I'm being kicked over here. I, I, what uh, was the question? Um, the fact that Zoss actually went oh. ahead and listened and... Uh, <laughs> with how angry everybody was with them making it so that they dropped less, I would say it was a smart move to go back and up the drop rate again. Because people were really, really angry at that. It was kind of sneaky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Esteldian, I, I think we both agreed that 
it was something that needed to be done, especially with those two specific areas. It's just the timing was a little janky, don't you think? Yeah, the timing was definitely bad. Um, but so be it, I guess. Uh, obviously, people aren't still aren't happy with the new changes anyway. They were, I know someone was complaining on the boards that they ran through and they still didn't get anything. And in the old days, they used to get one every run, like 20 minutes of work. I'm thinking, well, doesn't that tell you that was a problem? It shouldn't have been a purple item every 20 minutes. Hell, you get the blue books less often than that. So for someone to complain that despite the change, they're still not the same as the old days. It's like, well, no, it was a nerfing. It's going to be a nerf. Even though they've put more parts in, it's not going to be the same drop rates as it was before because it shouldn't be. Okay. I was actually going to say one of the first areas I went into where I've never gotten one, I was on a, one of my, my low-level sorcerer playing around on her, and within like two or three pots I got one, and I only stayed in the one place. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, but you had to take yeah. into account your obscene amount of luck. Now, that is not a quantifiable <laughs> amount. You cannot, there's no way to put like a mathematical precision behind that. So I, I don't think you can use that. Oh, you're just way too lucky. Uh, I don't, I know, I don't, I don't think that can be used. <laughs> so um, overall, like, I think it was a big surprise for me that they. I guess did it so quick because like yeah they they kind of knee-jerk reaction with it and we're like yeah um we're going to go ahead and and do this for you guys um but you know we're planning on doing it later we all kind of thought yeah that's just a way of them going okay yeah we'll 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 do that sometime in the future i kind of thought it would have been months down the road but within a week of the patch that removed it I think that was pretty good. I, I, again, don't know why they didn't just wait and do it all at once, but... They probably uh, didn't expect everyone to be so angry at it. So you think it was almost like a knee-jerk reaction from them going, wow, we're getting lots of feedback, let's throw a developer on it now, rather than wait? That, that sounds like what it is to me. It, it, I, I tend to agree with you on that, because why would you... Why would you separate a patch like that out by two weeks? I mean, why wouldn't you just hold the fixes and do it all at one one shot? You know, some people are like, well, maybe the patch to add it wasn't ready. Well, then hold the other one back until it is and just do it all at once. And then it would have been, hey, guys, we lowered these ones, but we increased these ones, you know, to make it even. That patch would have, I think, universally went over better than we're taking everything away and we'll get we'll up everything sometime in the future. Of course, a week is fairly good turnaround time, but... I think they could have avoided a lot of the flack had they just waited. So I agree. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. It doesn't make much sense. But, uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Right. Um, at least they. Well, it's weird to me that they changed. I mean, they did the same strategy they did with the experience decrease. They nerfed a lot and said, "Well, we'll 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 improve dungeons later on," and they still haven't. But it's interesting that they said we'll improve the drop rates later on, and they were quick to do that. And yet the dungeons are still sitting there waiting for their experience boost. I, I almost feel no like the dungeons, like I agree, experience boost with dungeons, everyone kind of agrees with. But I think, I think they don't know how to do it. Because actually, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead real quick, um, because this is a perfect segue. But before I do that, I did want to mention... We do want to kind of beta test a call-in show, guys. So if anyone is currently listening to the show and you have an opinion that you would like to hear, like, because we'd like to hear from you guys as well. Um, we're recording via TeamSpeak now on our TeamSpeak server, which is uh, dungeoncrawlernetwork.typefrag.com. It's open. You can go ahead and join in. Obviously, you won't be able to join the channel we're recording at till we pull you in. But if you have a strong opinion on something or you have a question, you can hop in, send me a little ping notice going, hey, I have a question about so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, we'll definitely try to pull you in when appropriate, either during the discussion or at the end during our, uh, our, our community section. We'll pull you guys in. Please try to keep any questions or whatnot. I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute in length, give or take, and uh, we'll try to get that in there. So if you're interested, jump on in, send me a little ping about what you want to want to mention, and I'll uh, pull you into the channel when we, uh, when we can. All right, since you mentioned dungeon experience, 
There was another thing that happened this week, and while I have it in the notes, I wasn't going to talk about it right yet, but I'm going to do it right now. There it is. Um, there was a really quick leveling trick that was known, at least on the EP side, fairly heavily and was used a lot. It was Fungal Grotto and the Mud Crabs. Now, for those who don't know how this method worked, you were able to join up with a group of people, fight your way through Fungal Grot Grotto till I think the boss was a Crack Claw or something like that. I forget the exact name of it. Um, but this boss essentially would spawn a, a gaggle of little mud crabs. The idea was to constantly just kite the boss around, if you will, no one damaging the boss other than, than what was minimal. Um, and wait for him to summon these mud crabs, then everyone AOE them down. It was a huge chunk of experience. And people would do this for hours and hours and hours. And you could literally get from like 15 to 50 in like 15 hours. Like it was a massive the amount of time you could get in there. Um, somebody posted this up on Reddit. And within like two days... They hotfix this, and now the ads no longer give experience. So that was kind of funny, to be honest. Oh, hey, uh, hey, chat room, and Obi, I see you're in there, and uh, AJ. Um, Steldian. That was a quick nerf bat, don't you think? Uh, yeah, but I'll let that sort of thing slide, because it makes sense. That's, that's an exploit through and through. Um. It's a cock up in the design, and they're taking advantage of it. You know, it's, not, it's like the scorpion all over again in Craglon. Mm -hmm. um, so it needs to be fixed, and I'm glad they were quick to do it. I yeah, they were about very these guys quick. on Reddit who show off, like, "Oh yeah, I've got this new place. Well, well done. That's going to be nerfed then." <laughs> um, well, I'm sure they've already maxed their character before they advertise it. Of course, that's what you. Oh, happens. oh, absolutely. You wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, give away your secret if you were still using it. <laughs> Things, I what admire are your thoughts? them for being able to do it. It sounds boring to me, but hey. Okay. I think it was a great idea that they did that, because anytime there's an exploit where you can just level and grind that quickly, it needs to be taken care of. Because if the rest of us have to suffer, like me, with slow leveling, you know, then everybody should suffer equally. <laughs> I, I think the you suffering is your own doing more than anyone else's, but yeah, yeah, about that. Well, Misery loves company. It makes sense. Okay, all right, all right. I, I do like that they they take care of things like that quickly. It, it sucks that you know other things they do too quickly or out of the blue, but something like an exploit that that they're on top of like that, definitely. Okay. Alrighty. Um, next little bit of news. As the truck goes by, a uh, crown store update yet again. Four new items added to the Crown Store. Obviously, one of them being... I guess one of them was already part of the Crown Store, but it, it was the Palomino Horse. They finally added it for crowns. Um, which is kind of neat. And for anyone who hasn't bought it yet, you may want to consider buying it with crowns because it was originally 15 bucks. It's actually, I think, 700 crowns now, which is a lot cheaper than 15 bucks. So they lowered the price on that. Um, so that's really nice. They added a new costume set, obviously, which is the um, the ordinator set, and there were two other things: the Fennec Fox, which is adorable, and I think there was one more, but I can't remember what it is right now. There was one more thing they added. Oh, uh, yellow-eyed guar as a mount. Turn game. Oh yeah, I could do that. Uh, the yellow-eyed guar, um, Stellian. I know you don't really buy too much when it comes to Crown Store, but did you did you buy anything from the Crown Store? Uh, funnily enough, even as you mentioned that, I suddenly thought, do you know, I completely forgot to have a look at those costumes. So if you don't mind me, I'm actually just going to have a little <laughs> perf in the Crown Store at the costumes. Nice. Uh, they're definitely a nice set. It's one of my favorite sets in the game because it looks like the Hand of Amalexia, stuff like that. So it, it's definitely very cool. Um, Thais. I, I will be buying the fox. The fox is adorable, because I bought it already, and it is the cutest little thing. I would love to have a fennec fox as a pet in real life, because they, they, you can have them as pets. 
a lot of care, but you can. And they're they're just so adorable with their gigantic ears. And I love them. <laughs> the guar, is it another male or is it a pet? It is a another mount. It's a yellow-eyed guar. I will probably be buying that. It's nice to switch up your guars, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, one of them was striped, another one was, you know, kind of spotted. What, what is this one? Uh, this was the yellow-eyed guar. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here, because I have it Golden here. Golden eye, I believe. Golden eye, be yeah. Uh, I should be sitting on it in the stream. Oh, you're sitting on the stream? Awesome. Uh, golden eye guar. It's this guy. Ooh. He's got the little golden eye. See? There Very you go. Nice. Very nice. Yep. These cute guar mounts are very nice, and they are always very popular, hence why the price tag on them is a little high. Oh, so worth it, though. They're adorable. Yeah. And then uh, you, you ride your big guar, and you get your little pony guar out, and then you got a guar family. A guar family? Right. Right. Okay. Well, that was, that was the news from that. So if you haven't, obviously, the fennec fox is probably the most adorable thing on the planet, so obviously you're going to want to buy it. Um, the costumes, what, what do you think of costumes, Estelle, Dan? It's, it's not bad. Um, the first one looks a bit, kind of just like a golden Dark Elf look, to be honest. Uh, the other ones look interesting. I'm not much of a skirt wearer myself, but if I was going to be wearing a dress, they look decent enough. I wouldn't buy them, but that's more because it's not my style more than anything. Uh, I can see why people would buy them, though. I'm, I'm a big fan of costumes, to be honest. Oh, you, so. you like the costumes, really? I do like costumes because I don't like being stuck wearing god awful looking gear at a high end just because it's better loot. Right. When you, when you have to rely on dropped items, I do not like having to have that graphic. Oh, I agree. I, I'm very much a fan of being able to look the way that I want, even though I still would rather them allow us to make our own costumes. Oh, but, big time. You know, that, that would be preferable to me because I desperately want to make my own costumes. Um, but it, they were definitely, a, I like the set, because if I remember correctly, I don't, can you actually get this set in-game? Like, I don't know if Craft and Armor set looks like this exactly. I might be wrong, but still. Um, even so, if you have to stick with the Undaunted sets, which are ugly as sin, um, for the most part, it's nice to be able to cover those things up. I like costumes. For a while, I was wearing one of the costumes from the store, but my, my favorite set is the Dark Seducer set, which is the set that I went back to. Oh, well, that's a costume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. No, there, there's nothing... I know that one's really popular, so it, it's pretty nice. It just looks so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next little bit of news then is, well, let's go ahead and talk about the new experience potion that has been data mined. Um, some of you may have seen the one before where I know we talked about it going, uh, we were kind of worried about it. Um, where I'm in the wrong section. There we go. And there's a little image. I'm gonna go ahead and post this in chat and I will also make it as part of the notes as well so people can actually see it. Um, but they data mine this new potion, and this new potion is a little different than the last one because it kind of fixes what I was worried about. You gain the maximum possible experience points from all sources for one hour. Current maximum 50% more, so you get a 50% bonus, kind of like being uh, rested. That's essentially what this potion does, is gives you rested experience for longer than the rested is what I'm guessing. The timer pauses when you're offline can only be, and resumes when you come back online, can only be used if you are not veteran rank. I like it. I like it. I don't. Tell me your thoughts, why don't you like it? It seems a little unfair. Because the hardest point in the game to level is the veteran ranks. It's easy to get from 1 to 50. Okay. Leveling well, you, the rest of the way is the most difficult. You also got to remember, they're planning on removing veteran ranks soon anyway. Well, uh, well I wouldn't say terribly yeah, soon. Yeah, how but, soon is soon, exactly. But the problem was, if you could use them after veteran ranks, they also in, uh, increase champion level experience. And some people were saying, not Esteldian, maybe me, that that's a little, you know, pay to win. Because you're essentially paying to make your character stronger through 
you know, the champion point system. Yeah, but you still have to sit there and do all the work to get the experience. I don't see that as pay to win, but that's just me. Okay. I, I, I don't see that. Now, is it a little unfair to have that in the first place? Maybe a little bit. Seems kind of like easy mode. But, again, you still have to do all the work to get the experience points. Yeah, but you're also doing less work if you have the, the, the bankroll to fund it. Now, if I if if that was allowed to be for veteran rank characters, I I'd buy them in a heartbeat. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I mean, it, it is what it is, but I know I was not fond of it just due to the fact that I felt it was pay to win with the champion points because people who are veteran fourteen who have a large amount of money will simply sit there and you know buy lots of them in order to. Um, in order to, you know, keep the veteran rank farming going. So. Uh, Someone in chat had mentioned that I'm not so sure they're going to remove veteran ranks anymore. Which I, I actually said that I'm not so sure either, to be honest. I kind of think that how it is right now seems to be working very well with the veteran ranks and the champion points. So... To me, it just seems like they're they're still in the game, so how long are they going to keep them there, or are they not going to get rid of them at all? I know we'd already uh, talked about this a little... Oh, go ahead, Estelian. I was going to say, they will get rid of them. Um, I don't think it's working that well at all, to be honest. <laughs> it's. I mean, even now, I can't be asked to get my lictors up. I'm, I enjoyed <laughs> doing... I actually enjoyed Veteran Ranks first time around, funny enough, so I was all like, oh, people are whining about it, it's, it's fine. But my God, you see, the idea of getting to vet and think, oh, I've got to do it all over again, I cannot be bothered. And that's why you get people farming mud crabs or whatever the hell you can find to cheat your way through because it just, you're like just blowing your own brains out by, by the time you're halfway through otherwise. Um, right. To be honest, I think the amount of work that goes involved with getting rid of vet ranks, I don't understand why they just turned around and said, you know what, every vet rank cost is, is 200,000 experience. So half a champ point is a vet rank. Um, change the first silver and gold to new vet levels, kind of the same way that the Cyrodiil mobs are. They're vet 12 mobs and they V5 difficulty. I'm sure it's easier to play around the, the zones of the mobs than it is to redo the whole gear design and work it all out that way. So I'd say stick with the, the VR ranks because it's not awful. Um, but it's just, it has to grind to get to the top, so just change it. Why make it a grind to get to the top? You you don't even want the vet levels anymore, but they're there. They're more of a hassle to get rid of than they are. You know, so you can't do it easily. So, hey, just make it quick and easy, and everyone's happy. Right. I honestly think that the veteran ranks were, like we talked about before, was a very old system that they put in thinking this is what we were going to go, found out players absolutely hated it, and now they have to try to go back and, and back out of it. But it's not so easy when you've already implemented the the different uh, silver and gold content based on this new leveling rank. Um, gear is based on it as well. Like there's, there is a scale in power. How do you get rid of it without completely botching your entire game? It's kind of rough. Exactly. Don't just make it easy to get through them. I know some people... I, I, I think the whole idea of with the people in chat saying they think they were going to remove it. I don't believe that's the case because I think we would have heard of it by now. I think it's the fact people are starting to spread that rumor around because we haven't heard much about it. Uh, Cause people are saying, Oh, we're going to, they're going to remove veteran ranks before console release. And Zoss was like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. Um, people were like, well, they're going to do it within the first patch. And then, then it came into a series of, no, they're not going to do that either because why force Xbox and PS4 players to level to VR 14 and then have it removed two months after or a month after? I think it's still on their plan, but I think it's further along than we than we think. So, yeah. Um, what are, what are your thoughts on the experience potion though? Now that now as they were saying, it's not going to work if you're veteran rank, so therefore it will stop at 50. So once you get to the point where you're 50 and earning champion points, you can no longer use them. It was a brave move. Um, I always said that experience potions are inevitable because they're easy money makers. Um, like they said, leveling 1 to 50 is already easy. I'm not sure where your money's going to come from now that you've locked out vet ranks from the potions. Um, so it's an interesting move. I, I applaud them for it. As, while I didn't necessarily think 
the potions were as big a deal as everyone was making out. They are in PvP, of course, but I just figured they'll end up battle sparing it, so everyone's got the equivalent amount of champ points anyway. So I figured eventually it would be in a, in, irrelevant for PvP. But there is a certain aspect where it is giving someone advantage. I didn't think it was that big a deal, but some do. So great that it's gone, but it's pretty lazy of them to not have it work on. You could have made it work on vet ranks without actually affecting your your champ points because there's clearly a separation there anyway because rest experience gives you massive amounts of your, your real experience so they could have done a separation there so you could have had potions work you all the way up to 14 without giving you extra champ points would have made you more money as well because so, people actually would have bought them but, well, fair enough okay Pace, you have anything you want to say on that before we continue I completely agree with Estonia, and they could have made it so that it doesn't affect champion points. I'm going to say and then, this. And then they would have sold so much. Go ahead. No, no, I, 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 oh, that was an, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I thought that was the end of your, your thing. No, no. I agree with you. That would have been awesome. I think, and I'm going to say this, and Zoss, I do love you, but Zoss has proven already that they tend to take the lazy route on things, and I think it was too much coding for them. Could they have separated it? Possibly, but I think the way they are, they've already worked on it, the champion points just based off normal experience, right? How would you separate that out? Because they're both, if you think about it, they're both using the exact same formula, the exact same number that comes out. System generates a number, and they both base off of it. Super easy for coding, but there's no way for them to separate it out once you've already made that change. Okay. Do you, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand, because in my head it seems so easy, just make it so that champion points will never get 50% bonus. Well, like, to me it just seems so easy in my head. <laughs> it can't it, be that hard. No. <laughs> it, when, you, when I kill something right now, I get 400 experience for a kill, but I'm getting, what, 1800 for my champ points because I got enlightened on. Surely the push can work in the same way that they've got their calculation working with uh, enlightenment. Hmm. When you drink the potion, you get the same effect of enlightenment, albeit a smaller version. So that's what I would have thought would have worked. But so there must be something in game that already works. Otherwise, enlightenment wouldn't work how it does, surely. Right. Yeah. No. There's there. I'm sure there's some back end code to it where they're they're saying, listen, we could do this, but in order for us to do this, we'd have to you know get our developers in there to change how this entire system works. We don't want to uh, introduce this potential pay to win aspect to our game which some people like myself tended to believe it was whether or not you agree with me or not that's fine uh Esteldian and Thais obviously don't but I felt that way and I know several people who did so in order to avoid the controversy which is awesome they just said okay we're just going to allow for the 1 to 50 game up to where you start earning your alternate advancement I think that's awesome you know, heck, I even if I have level 50 ones, I may buy a bunch just to support Zoss, just because I like the decision. But I think they, they did this just because it was too hard to do the code for a cash shop item. Because you got to remember, we already talked about this before, cash shop items are meant to be super quick, easy cash grab. If there's a lot of development time that goes into it, you automatically lose a lot in that profit. Because the idea yeah, is get yeah, something out quick, get a lot of money back away. If you're spending a lot of development time, you're losing potential cash. Yeah, but the difference is if, if one version is going to sell not nearly as many as the other, the argument is it's worth making the extra version. But as you say, they, I'm sure they've got their reasons. Like you said earlier, it could be because they are still planning on getting the vet ranks. So why waste, again, why waste some time messing around with the coding when the potions aren't out yet? For all we know, they might be coming out the same sort of time as the vet ranks. So just Mm -hmm. put a little note on there now so that they knew who were going to data mine and now they can reassure them that it's not going to be pay to win but they might not actually bring him out until around the time vet ranks are getting ready to go anyway right we know and here's a question for you guys that this might be something that maybe it wasn't generosity from zoss at all but you got to think about it like this i just thought of this while i'm sitting here the champion point system it what is it 3600 points or something like that they they talked about this requiring years to finish right this was their way of alternate advancement what do they do when people max out they're gonna have to come out with some sort of new content right 
I mean, the yeah. problem is if people are buying this and then maxing out their champion points, et cetera, et cetera, you're introducing a huge power gap between the two player bases. Um, you also hit that point where your most dedicated players, the people who are willing to throw bunches of money at the shop, are all of a sudden maxed out on their champion or their champion points. They have nothing else to do in the game and they quit. I almost feel like they may have done this not to be generous to players or to avoid the controversy, but to extend the life of their own game. Thoughts? No? No thoughts? Uh, could be a possibility, although you might even still be giving them a bit too much credit. For all we knew, maybe, I mean, this was data mine stuff, so maybe this potion being at the end of the game, and someone came along and went, oh, they found it and said, this is terrible, it's pay to win. For all we know, Zoss might have had no idea then and thought that far ahead and thought, holy crap, they're right. We didn't even think about that. So it wasn't like they're changing their design. They just hadn't even thought of the, of the champ point effect. Or maybe even they'd started putting this stuff into the game or had an idea of potions before they'd even finished with the champ point system. We all know that the buy to play and the crown stuff was all in the back end works anyway. For all we know, mm -hmm. the potion could have been designed before they even got as far as the champ point. So they hadn't even put two and two together until it got data mined and someone said, uh, this is going to be pay to win. Got a point. Definitely have a point. Uh, all right. I guess we'll go ahead and move on to the next little bit. Uh, again, guys, if anyone has any comments or questions or whatnot, feel free to join the Dungeon Crawler Network team speak, uh, dungeoncrawlernetwork.typefrag.com, and uh, ping me with your what you want to say, and we'll try to pull you in if you, if you want. All right. Or when we can. All right. Next little bit of news, Loremaster Archive, Ranks of the Daedra. This is a, a Thais thingy here, but I don't think we're going to read all of it. Um, I think we're just going to read this little part right here. Are you not going to read any of the questions? Well, I was going to, but my throat still kind of hurts, and there are... Oh, wow, that's a lot. Yeah, there's like 90 of them, so... Um, Okay. Oath of a Dishonored Clan. Resting never again until our purpose be achieved, ever watchful for an opportunity to repay the wrong. Valkanez Cirrus, we shall extract the fee for betrayal. Even our duty to the Overkin is transcended by this. Never again to hear the name Fool Killer's Clan, Agony. Generous will we be to those who aid our purpose, ending the false ascendance of the Deathbringer clan. Now, this person, this Lyraneth person, I think she was in uh, Cold Harbor. She was the one who, I guess she, we were talking about how her entire clan was banished. Uh, since they don't die, they get banished and they're in like the nether forever or whatever until they reincarnate or whatever the case may be or reform. But that could be a massive amount of time. So she's kind of all by herself. She goes ahead and talks about the different ranks and hierarchy in Daedra. I apologize to the people listening. Uh, my voice is still not where it needs to be, and there were probably 20 or 30 questions it felt like. <laughs> do you want me to read some of the smaller ones? I can do the question and answer. No, we'll let it for other people to read if they really are interested in it. Because it, there, is, there is a lot. Some of these, some of these questions are a book. <laughs> uh, which is awesome for lore if you are interested in Hierarchy of Danger go ahead and check it out on the official Elder Scrolls online page alright Oh, Ark can't make it sorry Ark we miss you alright next little bit of news coming up Battlemasters Corner the Adric Warden now I will say this about this uh, build I pretty much use this exact build like it, it, it's kind of funny um, he goes through and he talks about his uh, um, attribute distribution he's like 45 health 17 stamina I don't go that route I actually go less health than that and uh, but otherwise it's almost identical to his build uh, Steldin did you actually see this build uh, yeah I did it actually kind of reminded me uh, similar of what I would first put on my DPS build when I was messing around on the PTS. Uh, okay. That's actually a fairly solid build. Um, I wouldn't say it was necessarily optimal, but that's not a bad thing. It's still very good, very solid, and you could use it in trials. There were just a few tinkerings you could do to make it better. 
Well, yeah. Specifically within this build itself, I think some of the issues that I know of it are... Um, like, in terms of actual... Skills, I think they're about perfect, with the exception of I really wouldn't go with Reverse Slash over Executioner. That's my personal uh, thing. His, his build is almost perfect in that regard. I mean, absolutely perfect. Uh, some of the attribute distribution and armor types I'm not too fond of. Like, I think he specifically built this thing using the um, the one on Daunted set. The, uh, what is it? He's using... Yeah, yeah, the Engine Guardian, yes. Yeah, I can use um, that. Five pieces of uh, what is he? Doing? Hunding's rage. Obviously, that's perfect. You know, that's if you're a melee character, that's what you're gonna do. Uh, but he pairs it with two pieces of engine guardian um, to try to help with some stamina regeneration. I, I'm just not sure if that's really what Definitely I would not. go with. Like no. the problem what, is, what it's random. Yeah, as you're saying, it, it's a random chance. It could be any three of the stats. And you, I don't know what the exact proc percentage is, but even if it were fairly, fairly often, you still don't have any, uh, you know, way of guaranteeing that you're getting stamina. It's ten percent. So one in every ten attacks, or I think it's only skills as well. So one in every ten skills you use, you're going to proc the engine guardian, and you've got a one in three chance of it being. Is there an internal yeah. cooldown on it? Um, I don't think so. I've even seen people get two at once up, kind of like as one's dying down, the other one sort of spawns. Okay, so all right. At most, a six second cooldown, I guess, because that's how long one lasts. But as I say, I've seen one appear when the other one's going, so probably not much of a cooldown at all. Okay, well, that's that makes it a little better, but the whole random chance of what you're going to get, you know, I, I don't know. It, 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 I think it'd be fun to play with. Like, it'd be definitely a fun build, but if you're doing anything quasi-competitive, uh, whether it be trials or, um, uh, you know, some of the higher-end veteran dungeons, if you're going for the top numbers you're probably better off with a different set, specifically five Hoondings and I guess the rest. What is that set? Five Ravaging. Ravaging, yes, five Ravaging. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of... And Master Greatsword, ideally, but obviously yeah. that's all. I mean, he's got a solid... To be honest, the Ravaging, obviously, is, is a pain to get. Um, mm -hmm. So of everything he's listed, it's, it's a good, solid set he's using. Uh, albeit, I say it's a good set. It, it literally is just that two-piece... I, I would change. Ideally, you want Valken Scoria, but again, that's not the easiest piece to get, depending on how often you're doing City of Ash. Um, and I guess there aren't that many other sets. I'd probably look for another two-set piece that might give some weapon damage. I, I honestly wouldn't even Scoria. use Valken Scoria. Oh, Valken Scoria is brilliant. I love it. It now I agree it might be, but the problem is with his build, Valken Scoria is what is it? A four percent chance to proc off of a dot. His yeah. main bar, which is his two-handed, there's no dots. Uh, yeah, well, it depends. I mean, there's actually another. There's two things I I wouldn't use on his build. One is power of the light. Does he still have that on there? You know, I, I he would. does. He does, and I've actually been using that fairly often. Um, I it's use it. Actually, pretty good. It is good, but there's issues with. I can't remember what they were now. Um, I don't think it can ever crit. Can it crit? I'm sure it doesn't crit. Um, uh, it, it, I, I don't I'm think sure. it crits because it stores up the damage, but again, if yeah. you're already having a super high damage build, you don't really have to worry about that now, do you? Because it, it's storing up all the damage you're doing and then released a huge burst of damage. You know, I forget what the exact percentage of it is, but... Well, if you get high enough, you can do like 6,000 with it if you're really lucky, depending on how, how high it gets to if you've got loads of stamina. Um, right. Yeah, I, I used to use it. On the PTS, I was like, wow, this skill is great. I've used it. But then I realized, actually, I think it worked out. I do more damage with a wrecking blow than I do actually with the combined to total of using that thing. Um, okay. Well, actually, I didn't, I didn't use Wrecking Blow either, to be honest. I just keep with spiking Jabs. I wouldn't have Wrecking Blow on my bar, to be honest. It's uh, it's good, but I think biting Jabs is more effective. Okay. I, I've, been, I've been rocking the Bite and Jabs uh, just to keep the, the proc up, but that Wrecking Blow, like, I'm determined that is the way to go with damage, but I may I be wrong. There's a slight increase using Wrecking Blow, but it's just it's so clunky even now. 
compared to the bank jabs just seems to be much smoother okay uh, more importantly uh to your issue about Falcon scorias, biting jabs procs Falcon scoria so that yourself you've got a dot right there hitting four times every one second does that actually count as a dot yes it does and if you use caltrops as well then that also counts so you've got a 35 second dot ticking away and you've got puncturing sweep so you've always got your ravages ravaging proc going on as the caltrops counts towards that proc as well and Falcon scoria procs up with those as well Okay. All right. Now, see, I, I was unaware of the fact that, because in in all intents and purposes, biting jabs isn't a dot. It's just repeatable damage from a you know like a multi hit thing. So, um, I'm I'm actually kind of curious if they will hot fix that at some point or fix it because that doesn't, in all definition, you know, from you know the back end point of things, it's not a dot. It's just a super fast attack. Because technically speaking, if you you can get hit two times out of it if you dodge roll out of it you're not taking all the damage whereas the dot would remain on you um so i'm, I'm kind of surprised that it actually does proc it now he doesn't have caltrops if you had caltrops yeah uh valken scoria definitely is a awesome build but without it you know uh caltrops are is wonderful if you're willing to pvp enough to get it so <laughs> Yeah. I'm not willing to PvP I mean, enough to get it. Right. Scoria would be questionable. As I say, I'd probably just do a two-piece item. Or uh, just retro weapon damage at that point. I wouldn't have any other set to use. I don't think any of them are worth it. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, this is probably one of my favorite builds from from one of these Battlemaster corners. It's It's very good. If you're interested in checking it out, obviously grab it. If you're not doing anything like trials related or super serious speed runs of veteran dungeons, I would say run it because the engine guardian isn't terrible to get um, because I feel like that dungeon is every other day. If it's not, uh, if it's not dark shade caverns, it's um, what's the other one, the one that you hate so much. Fungal Grotto. Not Fungal Grotto. It's like Fungal Grotto, no dark shade and. What was that, Stellian? Spindle Clutch. Spindle Clutch. Those are like the yes. only ones I see ever happen on the Veteran Pledge. Like, that's every time I go, it's one of those three. Um, so it's often easy to find a group for those dungeons just by going, you know, hey, looking for Vet Pledge. Because it's normally often one of those three. Um, at least that's what I see a lot of. I don't know if it's if it's true, like if it's really supposed to be that way, but and, it sure seems they're terrible. That way. They're like the three worst dungeons. Three, well, I think they're quite fun. Ugh. I, I like them. They're not. I don't bad. like dark shade. I find dark shade a pain in the butt. Well, it's not that it's a pain; it's just tedious. I don't like that last boss, that stupid spider that got run around. Oh yeah, seen... the actual engine it's guardian nice. itself. Yeah. Yeah, but it's well worth getting that set for PvP. Well, it's, yeah, it's amazing. You it's need all probably resources. It's probably not a terrible set if you're a tank either, and you can't get a hold of the uh, the other tanking sets because resources are life, really. So, um, yeah, I've always... the only reason I don't like it for tanking is the stupid health regen it has <laughs> as its really? two set bonus. Uh, I'd much rather full uh, a health max health or something. Right. Okay. Anyway, if you want to check out the entire build, definitely head on out to the official Elder Scrolls Online page, and you can find it under their Battlemaster corner. I actually really like the build. It's pretty cool. It's worth a look. It's one of the best ones they've had. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. other than some questionable choices, which, as I said, we don't know what his build is for, but even so, it'd be fun to play with. His actual build itself is solid. All right. Imperial City Plan is the next update, followed by Orsinium. This coming from a tweet off of the official Elder Scrolls Online page. Uh, they tweeted, we plan, to re re <laughs> we plan to release Imperial City after console launch, and Orsinium is slated for release after that. So, there we go, guys. Imperial City next, followed by Orsinium. Thoughts, Thais? You're looking at me. Oh, I just, I really wish we could go into Orsinium with, um, with the Evanheart Pack and just kill all the orcs. Kill all the orcs? Yep. 
Oh, why you gotta pick on the little pig children? Because I I don't like anybody that's not, you know, in my alliance. Okay, <laughs> Steldian, how about you? Uh, the Imperial City coming next. I think I think we all saw that coming. <laughs> Let's talk about a long overdue add-on DLC ever. Um, mm. And it's good news for you. You might actually do some PvP and get yourself Caltrops. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Just because I can go in there and kind of PVE while I PvP. I like it. Maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll be interested in seeing what happens. Uh, I look forward to it. Okay. I've been getting more and more into PvP recently because I don't in PvE wise, there's not that much I need to do anymore. So I dabble. Dabble. All right. I look forward to it too. I think it'll be fun because it's the PVE in the PvP, which to me just seems so much easier and, and better to, to kind of adjust to the PvP. Okay. So I know that I'll I'll be in there dying frequently. Well, for all you Dark Age of Camelot fans or those who don't know what that is, this is essentially Darkness Falls, which was a PvP dungeon that you gained access to when you held the majority of keeps. Um, I was very excited when I heard about it because it's essentially ripped exactly from Dark Age of Camelot, so that's very exciting. Um, they still haven't adjusted what I believe will be the major issue, and that's going to be buff campaigns are the places to go. Um, you know, that's just how it goes. Uh, AJ and chat, I would like Orsinium soon, but I feel like it's, it is good Imperial Cities first because PvP needs some content. Yeah, they haven't really got much content. and uh, Zoss is pretty much putting all of their eggs in the basket that um, Cyrodiil is their PvP experience, not Battlegrounds. They've already said uh, they have no plans to work on those. So there are no secret plans. They have no write-ups on it. Nothing like that for any type of Battlegrounds. Uh, instance Battlegrounds are arenas. So if you were looking for that, this isn't the game for you, uh, at least for right now <laughs> and in the foreseeable future. Cause it's not even like housing. Like they talked about, like housing's at least on their roadmap arenas and, and, uh, battlegrounds are not. So they're, they're really sticking with, uh, Cyrodiil. Uh, so this would be nice to add to the meta place for people to go do some PVE related things and possibly get ganked or gank others. So, I like it. I like it a lot. All right. And I'm fighting a monster, so therefore I cannot see the next little bit of news. Oh, okay. Final little bit of news. Um, we talked about this a little bit, like rumored, but it is now actually confirmed. I don't know what you guys will think of this, but it is now official that Nick Conkle is officially not part of Zoss any longer. If you don't know who uh, Nick Conkle was, uh, he appeared during, um, what was it, the QuakeCon event. He was talking about spellcrafting, and he appeared in a few other places. But he is no longer a part of Zoss. He is now moved on to, I think it's Riot. So he now is the senior game designer at Riot. And I guess they have a new uh, senior game designer at Zoss. So uh, sorry to see Nick go because Nick Nick was a pretty cool guy. I like Nick. So I'm really kind of sad to see that go. I'm kind of curious to see where spellcrafting is going to go in the future. I know they probably didn't scrap the idea, but uh, spellcrafting was kind of his baby. So now we're going to probably see some changes to it because obviously whenever new management or a new designer takes over they bring their vision in rather than the original so uh steldian what are your thoughts uh well at the end of the day if this is any other and there's been a bit of a big deal sometimes people panicking but in any other job people come people go they they move on they get a nice offer somewhere else they want a change so good for him for moving on um, I think it's a nice, it makes a nice change from when a game's gone from sub to something else, which is usually the sign of it failing. You usually get a load of a mass loss and a load of firings. This seems like the guy just got another job offer and moved on. So it makes a nice change to not have an entire dev team get culled and just have someone move on of his own accord from what I can gather, because usually it's a 
big media burst up if it's more of a kicking out. So sure. Shame to see him go. He would seem a good guy, but yeah. Someone else yeah. will carry it on. Life goes right. on. Um, face, any thoughts? I really don't think it bodes well that one of their main guys is now gone. Okay. I... I, I want to say I think it's the start of a whole bunch of more bad things happening, <laughs> but I really don't want to say that. Like I, I really don't. I have I have a lot of hope. And, and... Zoss has not pulled a daybreak yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am so seriously hoping that everything still continues. I can't really say continues. Tries to continue to go well. I I'm, I'm hoping, but yes, I I feel like it doesn't bode well. I really don't. Okay. Um. I. I'm not really concerned uh, in any one way because the video game industry, if we've learned one thing, is it is probably the most fickle business in the world. If you are going to be a game designer, do not expect to be with a company for 50 years. It will not happen. Um, I feel bad for those guys. Like, I really do. Technically speaking, like, I've been at my job for about six years now. Uh, and I'm really, I mean, I, I'm not looking for another job in any one way. So my boss should be happy about that because they treat me well. I like where I'm at, et cetera, et cetera. And as long as I don't do something dumb and get fired, as of right now, we're a growing uh, bank. That's where I work at. Um, there's not really anything in the foreseeable future that I'm worried that, oh, we're going to get acquired and someone's going to, you know, downsize us. Uh, so I sort of have what would be known as as best as you can have of job security, right? Game industry is not that way. Six years, people probably have already left the company. There's very few developers, unless they're the guy who started the company, that actually remain with a game company for a long period of time. Uh, loss of one high-profile developer, not that big of a deal. I mean, a lot of the concern, like uh, another game that I follow, uh, EverQuest Next, when they left SOE, Sony Online Entertainment, became Daybreak, they fired a whole bunch of staff. Like, a whole bunch of and high-profile staff. They fired one of the guys, uh, Dave Jordanson. I don't know if anyone knows who that is, but if you followed the EverQuest uh, franchise, Steldian, you should probably know this. He was the head of the Elder Scrolls franchise for, like, 17 years or something like that. Um, that was a scary situation. Like, there's still people reeling about that one, and I know their president's like, oh, there's no real issue. We obviously, you know, when we made our own company, we now have to reform and do whatever. Um, that was a scary situation. The situation that happened at uh, uh, the game that you like and you follow, Wildstar Carbine Studios with, uh, I forget his name, Frost something. He was a high-profile guy, but a lot of other people got canned as well. That was a scary situation and something I'd be scared of if it happened here. But one developer, you know, he probably, Riot is probably one of the biggest game companies. I think they probably, uh, they beat Blizzard Entertainment right now in, in terms of revenue. They probably offered him a nice studio apartment sized uh, office and he took it, you know, so good for him. Um, I'm curious about spell crafting, but we'll, we'll have to wait and find out. All right. Um, AJ in chat I don't think this means bad tidings at all things like this happen all the time even though it's sad to see him go Yeah, I think that's more than anything for me like I echo the sad they, go ahead it just scares me about like what if other people leave like what oh, if yeah. like what if the lore guy leaves oh no like <laughs> I, I think I'd cry. Don't even, don't even say such <laughs> dirty words. So with, with, with big names like this leaving leaving a company, like, to me, if I had a great job that I loved at a great company like this, I wouldn't ever leave. But that's that's just me. Unless they got rid of me, I, I wouldn't leave. So it's a scary thought to me, like, well, why did he leave? What's going on? What's happening? Like, what made him decide this? So that's that's how mine is how my mind is working on this at the moment. Okay. Maybe that's why I feel like it just doesn't bode well. No, and, that, and that's perfectly valid. Uh, still, yeah, it doesn't ahead. worry me so much. Um, yeah, well, I just think like I in my job, I've been there eight years now. Um, I'm happy in my department. I'm comfy. I'm there. Go on, but I've had two people leave, and they've been there. I've, I've known them for seven years, and their only reasons for leaving was one fancy to change, and one just wanted a pay rise from somewhere else, and. That's probably why Nick's gone. 
either a change of scene or extra money or both. So he's gone, okay, they might headhunt some of the people who worked with him on ESO. Obviously, now that he's over there, that, that's the risk. He might sort of tempt some other people over. Yeah. I don't think it's a case of a mass exodus for any reasons other than he just wanted a job and he might have some friends he invites over and right. offers them a nice deal as well. Yeah, definitely one of those things where it could be, as you say, he just wanted something new and maybe he was tired of working on this franchise and or he uh, the company itself said, okay, we like what you're doing with spellcrafting, but it's not the way we want it to go. And he's like, well, okay, I'll take my myself somewhere else. You know, that's always an option, especially, you know, when you work on a game, it's a collaborative effort. So while you have your ideas, they often say that you always got to be prepared to be shot down because it's a it's a collaborative effort where everyone's working together in order to to make a game. So you have to be willing to step back or make changes. Maybe he didn't like changes that were made. I don't know, but we we personally don't know unless we ask him himself. So okay, um, got to move one of our Khajiits because he's really excited. Uh, <laughs> AJ goes, I saw a video of Lawrence Schick reading the Elder Scrolls version of Goodnight Moon the other day. He had a monocle. Good stuff. I agree. He's my hero. Nothing classier than a monocle. There is not. All right. Okay. Next little thing is, well, that's the end of the news for this week, guys. And I think we talked a good bit. I didn't really have a discussion topic as a whole. We had a lot of news to go over. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll into our Tales of Tamriel, which is our personal story time, where we get to talk about what we did in ESO this week. So, Steldian, you're up. Uh, right, well, the big news is that our guild did clear AA this week. Ooh. After about a week or so off raiding, we've got back on, went straight in and got that place cleared. So that's both AA and Hellar are done. We've now just got to fine tune it so we can do both in the same night and then have the Friday night for Sanctum or hard modes. But we still need a few more members so that we've definitely got reliable 12 coming every 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 uh, raid night. So all in good time. Nice. Now, how many real, I guess members do you would you say you have right now that you could say are reliable members? Uh, good question. Let's see. I mean, of the 27 we've got. I'll say 25, so we're booting some soon because they're almost at 30 days. So we have a 30 day activity log. So, yeah, everyone we do have tend to be around. We've got probably 15 or 16 who are definitely heavily interested in doing the raids. The only okay. downside is obviously all it is a few people not being able to do a Wednesday night, for example, or the Friday night, or both nights. Or, so, so. It ends up being, we usually end up, had a few last week, we didn't do any raiding. We had 11 people signed up, so we could have got a pug and gone in there. But that's where we're at the moment, sort of hitting 10, 11 people sign up. If everyone's got going, we can get all the way up to 15. But we just tend to be, we want another, another five members would be nice to, to pick from, because then you pretty much guarantee you'll get 12 every single raid with a few spares as well. Gotcha. Yeah, it's always nice to have that. Especially with no lockouts of any kind, you can... You know, if you have extra people signed in, you can bring a group through clear and then just switch out people for the others because there's no lockouts. So Exactly. We've done that before as well to get everyone through. Nice. All right. Uh, is that about all you did this week? Uh, other of note? PvP fun, yeah. But nothing much to say there other than that our little group that ran around actually managed to beat a group bigger than us, which was quite an exciting moment because we're not exactly natural PvPers. So it was a very satisfying battle we won. Right. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, Thais and I did get to play a little bit this week. We didn't get to play a whole lot because obviously I've been fighting sickness like crazy uh, from these allergies and Thais being what would the what's the polite way? Extremely pregnant. <laughs> Is there like a, a little pregnant versus extremely pregnant? I think you're closer to the extremely pregnant. Yes. Yeah. Not much more to go. June twenty sixth. Yeah, it's it's almost there. So we're moving along. Mm -hmm. Um. The, really, we did a little bit of questing still in Bancora because that's where we're at. Uh, but one of the coolest things that I think we saw was... All right, go ahead, Thais. You're all excited. Oh, I just, I just want to say, we got to meet Hermaeus Mora. <laughs> that's true. You got, during one of the quests in... Uh, I forget the name of the place, but it was an old alien uh, palace, which turned out to be the home of... Um, 
the last king of the aliens, whatever his full name was. I forget it right now at the top of my head. Um, but it, in any case, like it was his home when he was on Nern before he got sucked in. So um, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, so we did that, uh, fought off some Reachmen, et cetera, et cetera. We're still working our way through Bancori. When we were fighting the Reachmen, I had still I still had my Reachmen outfit on, and there were a couple times Ag turned to attack me. Oh yeah, that happened. <laughs> that definitely happened. Mm. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I've been playing around with my alt character, my Altmer slave sorcerer. She is now 21, I believe. Yes, 21. Um, I'm not really happy with her build right now. I've just kind of been leveling skills with her, so it's not really anything of note. So I'm just playing with what I have. But, yep, yeah, that's, that's about it for us this week. Um, I got asked to go to a Sanctum event, but it was a hard mode Sanctum, and I'm like, I don't know, it's hard mode! So, I didn't go, because I wasn't happy with my DPS anyway, so, yeah. I, I can't believe you didn't go. What a pansy. Well, I'm not going to bring a team okay. down if my DPS is low. What? My DPS is low. Mm. And I'm not happy with it. So... Um, but yeah, I need to work on that, and then uh, then we'll go. So that was our weekend game. All right, time to move on to our next section, which is the dramatic reading, which I believe this week we are finishing, not finishing up, but Tribes of Merkmire. Yes, there we go. Tribes of Merkmire, part five, the Mire Dancers. So, face whenever you're ready. I've had the privilege to speak to two different Meyer, dance, Meyer Dancer elders now, and I've learned a great deal from both of these conversations. The Jerusalem, as they call themselves, are among the most introspective Argonians I've met in my travels. They also tend to be the most pleasant. For all their reclusiveness and wariness, I've never met a people more willing to share a meal or a game of shells and stones. They are skilled crafters with a particular knack for working with hissed amber and eggshells. They are also peerless navigators, guiding their flat bottom boats effortlessly through the swamp, master weavers, and skilled cartographers. The most defining characteristic of the Meyer Dancer tribe, however, is piety. This deep reverence for the hist has earned them the right to name a sap speaker for countless generations. According to the elders I spoke with, the sap speaker is the hist's direct intermediary. This is, of course, subject to debate. Many tribes boast unique methods of communication with the hist, but as far as I have seen, the Meyer dancers make the most compelling case for the methods they use. Sap speakers often go into seclusion for days or even weeks on end, venturing either down into the roots or high into the canopy of leaves in the uppermost branches. Here, they commune with the hist. Indeed, the word that one of the elders used was journey. These journeys into the hist tax the sap speakers, but are thoroughly private affairs. After days by themselves, the sap speakers emerge to hide away with old books, scrolls, and tablets. I asked for the purpose of these periods of seclusion, and this is what the elders told me. The sap speaker enters the embrace of the hist to learn from the great tree, one elder said. While in close contact with the roots and branches, the sap speaker receives visions and other forms of communication that neither you nor I would understand. The other elder continued, even the sap speaker finds some of what is shown to be mystifying and confusing. I have heard that a sap speaker is treated to ancient metaphors, arcane secrets, and visions that make little sense to creatures so far, from, so far removed from sap and pulp. Apparently, the second period of seclusion allows the sap speaker time to reflect on what he or she was shown, as well as time to consult with the ancient writings of sap speakers who came before. After a suitable period of study and reflection, the sap speaker emerges to reveal the hist's will to the tribe. I attempted to get more information about what happens while the sap speaker meditates among the roots or branches, but I'm not sure the elders knew much more. 
They did tell me that the only nourishment the sap speaker re receives during these periods of seclusion is provided by the hist itself in the form of sap, leaves, and the otherwise forbidden fruit of the tree. There is a price to pay for the gift of hist communication, however. Ingesting large quantities of hist sap is a dangerous affair, even for Argonians. Sap speakers routinely suffer the effects of sap poisoning, including gold tongue, permanent change of mouth pigmentation to a golden hue, unbidden hallucinations, bark scale, thickening and darkening of surface scales, and other maladies they were resident to talk about. The current sap speaker, Thumars, was in seclusion during my visit to the tribal village. I hope to meet him some day. If he's half as wise as the elders I interacted with, I'd no doubt learn a great deal from him. Despite their deeply religious nature, the Meyer dancers also seem to have an obsession with games of all types. They are particularly fond of the games Nine Shells and Shells and Stones, as well as sports such as popular Tiba Hasai, also known as Hip and Tail Ball. In addition to lovingly explaining their own games, they wanted to know everything I could tell them about the games we play back in Wayrest. I must admit, their enthusiasm was quite infectious. I found it highly amusing to watch them try to recreate the Seaver's bones from the vague description I provided. The Meyer dancers are also invertebrate gamblers. Inveterate gamblers. But they often forget to collect their winnings. Unlike the games of men and myrrh, Meyer dancer competitions appear to be completely devoid of malice or injured pride. Victory and defeat seem more like afterthoughts than objectives, due in no small part to their phlegmatic disposition. As in most things, their focus is strictly on the moment, the now. It pains me to leave their village, but I still have many more tribes to study. I doubt any of them will be as fascinating or as friendly as the Meyer dancers. You like those Meyer dancers? Oh, very much. Very yeah. much. <laughs> So that was the um, Tribes of Merkmire, the Meyer Dancers, part five of six of this uh, specific little look into Merkmire when that comes out. So next week is the final section, then we'll go back to our normal reading from the Dungeon Lore series. All right. Uh, next up is the add on spotlight, if we have one, Esteldian. Do we have an add on spotlight? Uh, we can do. <laughs> All right. I kind of threw that at you at the moment. So, um, yeah, whatever add-on you would like to spotlight for people. I'm trying to remember which one. We've done item saver, haven't we? Um, I think so. Item saver? Uh, I don't think we did item saver. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, we can dip into that one then quickly. That one's not too big a deal. Uh... Here we are. Yeah, so item saver is a godsend for me. Um, as you can see, I've got 50 odd pieces of gear with me and I carry that with me all the time. That's all my gear sets because I've got three tank builds, a DPS build, a PvP build, and then whatever else I fancy making up as I go along. Um, so item saver, this is this nice little button at the end of the right click menu where you can save an item or unsave an item. Once it's saved, it gets a padlock. So if I save this baluster, padlocks appear on all balusters I have. And that means I can't accidentally sell them. I can't accidentally deconstruct the item. Uh, basically, you get to choose exactly what you want the item saver to do. So you choose what it is. I've gone for the padlock, but you can have a flag or a star, whatever you want. And if you use the filters, basically it doesn't even appear in shops. So the item can never be you know, you can, you can have it appear and that means you can accidentally sell it despite having the padlock. So if you're like me and you're selling stuff and it does that annoying thing where your menu kind of flips and you accidentally sell an item because it's moved for some stupid reason, then it's a good idea to have filter shops on because then it won't appear on the list at all. Same for deconstruction, same for research. So once you flag an item to be saved, you can never accidentally deconstruct or sell or research that beloved item. Very nice. I actually, I think I use that one because uh, I have item sets in my bank and stuff that I'm not necessarily using yet, but you know, like that one set that you were after forever. Like I have it in my bank because I don't want to destroy it in case I get a, a tank character up that I want to play with. 
Um, but it, it does show up on my menus like to sell or to break down or to research. So I've used that add-on to make sure it doesn't show up so I don't accidentally click it. Because sometimes I get a little click happy. Yeah. Nice. It's, it's another one for even people who don't use that on, so sort of don't want to mess up their minimal UI. It doesn't do anything on your UI, it's literally just a padlock on an item on your, in your inventory. So, another nice simple one for anyone to use. Nice. Okay. Um, I guess now it's time for our guild spotlight where we will do our guild giveaway and Steldy and you could talk about your guild. Happy days. Yeah, as mentioned when I was talking about the raids, we could do with a few more people. Uh, it would be nice, ideally, vet ranks. So if anyone's on the EU server and Daggerfall is your main, then please do think about joining Crucio Sanctorum. We're a friendly bunch, honest. Come along, uh, just sign up on our website, which is Engine, but Crucio Sanctorum, I'm sure you're all familiar with Engine. A lot of guilds use it. And if not, you can go to Dungeon Crawler Network, and on the About Us page, you'll find a link there. So. Come along, come, come come apply, you'll get in. And then as I say, you can just sign up to our raids. They're not mandatory, but if you make one in the week or you like to do both, great, just sign up for whichever ones you fancy. And then we can move on and hopefully eventually get Sanctum done. Very nice. All right, I guess it's uh, my turn now, which will be, if you're interested in joining Wings of Fate, you can obviously do that. It's our uh, community trade guild. On the U.S. Mega Server, obviously. Um, sadly, we've been losing our traders. So hopefully, this week we're moving to a new location, and uh, hopefully, we'll get that trader this week. But we do have a guild raffle to do. Uh, I linked the the thing for you, Esteldian, that you could bring it up if you have a moment to do our random dot org. Yeah, hold on whenever you're at a point where it's safe. So obviously what we do here is we do a guild raffle every week. This allows us to um, earn money for the guild bank. Uh, everyone who wants to do it, they can donate a thousand gold you know, sent to me or put it in the guild bank, whatever works. And I look it up and add you to this little spreadsheet. Uh, every thousand gold is a ticket, so you can get multiple tickets if you want. And then what we do is we take 30% of what is earned and that goes to the winner. And the rest goes into the guild bank so that we can uh, bid on guild traders. So, this week we had 80, what is it, 85 entries. So, not bad, not a bad week, not a bad week. So, whenever you're ready, Esteldian, the numbers are 2 to 86. Okay, 2 to 86, and the number is 60. 60. Uh, All right, scroll up on our handy dandy little sheet here, and that would be Lord Obi. So, congratulations, Lord Obi. I will send you the money in game as soon as I get in there. I'm in there now, so I'm going to head over to the bank right now and do it for you. So, congratulations, sir. Thank you so much for participating, and uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, new raffle starts immediately, so if you want to participate this week, go ahead and get your uh, get your tickets in. All right, we had one email this week, and I think uh, Thais would want to read that. But first off, I need to link a image that our friend here, uh, this would be Arkneer, sent to us. I'm going to link it here in chat for everyone to look at. And I'm also going to open it up for Thais, because she'll get a kick out of this one, I think. Um, but I'm not going to let her look at it yet. I'm going to make her read the thing first, and then we'll get to it. So let me go ahead and pull this over. Ah. Okay. I hope you are all feeling great. I wanted to send an email regarding the last episode, and the reason is this. I believe I have a valid reason for not liking Guars, and I will explain it. Uh-huh. I was casually listening to the last episode while driving to the other end of the city... When all of a sudden I heard my name, and Thais goes, Ark does not like Guar, and Ag goes, what? And the rest is, how can you not like Guar? Obviously, I was laughing pretty hard. Then I missed a turn, got lost, and ended up in some godforsaken place. Praise Daedric, Lord of Maps. <laughs> anyway, I will try to explain why I do not like Guars. <laughs> 
Tamriel is home to many actually adorable and cute creatures, sheep of Daggerfall, goats of Alakir, cats, dogs, and it is also home to mighty beasts like noble horses of Skyrim, great chargers of Yokuda, tigers, leopards, dragons. Then, among all of that, there's Gwar, creatures with the general body structure of a chicken, feet of a giant harpy, hands of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, head of a, I don't know what, but that's weird, teeth of an alligator, but with all that it looks like a creature out of a mid Dunmer wizard's laboratory where he fusses, where he fuses all kinds of creatures into one with some weird daedric magic. Let me tell you, whoever came up with Gwars is definitely a fan of post-apocalyptic universes with several mutants as creatures. So the question is not, how can you not like Gwars, Thais? The question is, how can you? <laughs> Check the attachment for visual representation of the anatomy of Gwars. <laughs> you know what? Wow. That's... <laughs> you know what? You make a really, really good argument there, Ark. <laughs> for anyone who's curious, check the image in the uh, podcast link and in chat. Ark made a nice little anatomy of Gwar image to show exactly what Gwar looks like. But, you know, he took all, all, all those, like, the bad things of all those individual creatures when merged together into one creature is just so adorable. Was there, was there more to that? No, that was... That, oh, that was... The, oh, the message? Yes. Yeah, uh... Uh, okay. All that being said, I am ready to take on the hate. I'm kidding, of course. It is true that I do not like Gwar's, but that's just me. There's no way that I would go ahead and invoke the wrath of Thais. <laughs> that's just too risky. <laughs> Love you, Thais. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I hope I made a valid explanation, or I'm going to end up getting my arm bit off by a Gwar. <laughs> See you all in live. Blood for the pact. Blood for the pact. So, Ark, that was awesome. I, I like that you actually threw together that little <laughs> anatomy of Gwar image, so... Uh... It's it's pretty awesome. I like it. I, I'm not getting what the snake is down there, though. Chicken plus snake plus Because it's alligator. like a reptile, kind uh, of. Okay. I guess... Uh, yeah, yeah I, I guess he does have the body of so, chicken. And... So what? Is is this the Elder Scrolls platypus? The platypus? Who knows what it is kind of deal? Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys so much for listening. This is our final thoughts time. So Thais, why don't you go ahead and go first? Uh, I, I can't get over, I can't get over Ark. I just, I, I love Ark. He's so amazing. <laughs> he just, he made that show just perfect with his, his explanation and his, his wonderful picture. Nice. Nice. All right. Still the end, good sir. Uh, yeah, fun show, which, uh, is good because obviously next week I'm not going to be on the show due to being away. So it's a, a good ending before my slight break. Uh, it was always oh crap. Um, so I just saw <laughs> Big Zerg running by. Yes, uh, always fun. Like debating the various changes. Nice to see that due to a break we had quite a bit of news to go through for a change. Because let's face it, it's a bit of a dry patch usually. Right. Nice to combine it all to something worthwhile. Excellent. Um, and as for myself, yeah, good show. Sorry, everyone, that I, I was not here. And it was sort of last mi minute. Uh, wasn't able to get the guys together because I was kind of hoping I'd feel better because Saturday I was bad. But by the time Sunday was there, I was trying to get up and couldn't do it. So How dare you be human and get sick? I know. That is just... I know. Uh, it's it's I awful. I can't believe you. Uh, 20 lashes. 20 lashes. That's harsh. All right, 15. Okay. All right. Um, obviously next week I do want to say uh, with Estelle not being here and I will not be here either due to um, work. work yeah work and I won't be here due to my first baby shower yep first baby shower so I'm wondering if the show will go on maybe we might do it early I gotta talk to my crew I don't know but we will attempt to um I really hope they don't listen to the show, because I'm not supposed to know that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Awkward. Uh, uh. I could edit that out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> not cool. <laughs> I, I could, but I think it would be even more awesome if, like, I would know they listened to the show if they called you out on it. <laughs> so 
<laughs> if they don't call you out on it, then you have to yell at them and go, why don't you listen to our show? No, my sister will beat me. <laughs> I'm going to call them out on it. That's what I'm going to call them. No, like, you don't listen to don't. the show. Please don't. You don't listen to the show. You <laughs> then I'll be getting it. the 20 lashes. <laughs> I know. So, um, but yeah, next week, maybe touch and go just due to unforeseen circumstances on all parts. But we'll see what we can do. So stay tuned to our... Uh, Twitter feed at Tales of Tamriel and at Dungeon Crawl Net. They will give you the updated on what's going to happen. Uh, but thank you everyone for listening and um, have a good night, everyone. Good night, people. You just listened to another episode of Tales of Tamriel, a Dungeon Crawler Network production. If you want to get involved, please be sure to check out our website at www.dungeoncrawlernetwork.com. Please be sure to follow us on our social media and YouTube channels. We can be found on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Dungeon Crawler Network, on Twitter at Dungeon Crawl Net, and at Tales of Tamriel, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tales of Tamriel Podcast. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you next time.